Hello everybody. Um, so this video is about the StoryWorks article you are going to be read called The Dirty History of Soap. Okay. Now you're probably wondering why is something about soap, which is used to make you clean, why is it called The Dirty History of Soap? Well, we're going to find out. You'll also notice on the front, it says life wasn't always as clean as it is today. So we're going to be finding out some very interesting information. Um, so please flip and follow along. 15 year old Abigail Foote stirred a giant pot of stinky bubbling brown goo. It was 1775 in Colchester, Connecticut. For months, Abigail's family had saved globs of fat from their meat in big barrels. They'd collected ashes from the fireplace. Now, Abigail boiled the fat and the ashes together over a fire outside. Thick smoke stung her eyes and sweat trickled down her neck. At last, eight hours later, Abigail's creation was finished. After it cooled, she reached into the pot and scooped out a lump of wobbly brown jelly. It wasn't stew or medicine or a magic potion. It was soap. Now, the next section is titled Greasy, Itchy, and Stinky. And um, it's like in yellowish, greenish font. So that's the section we're going to be reading about. You're probably thinking, a mixture of fat and ashes, that doesn't sound very clean. Actually, it sounds pretty gross. But when the two ingredients are boiled together, they create a slippery new material that can help pick up dirt and wash it away. Humans began making soap this way nearly 5,000 years ago. That's a very long time ago, you guys. This early soap was greasy and lumpy. It made skin itchy. It often smelled like burned bacon. Ugh. Not surprisingly, most ancient peoples didn't bathe with it. They used it for pretty much everything except washing their bodies, scrubbing floors, doing laundry, cleaning tools, treating wounds, and even styling their hair. Notice how washing their bodies was not on that list. So they pretty much used that type of soap for everything else. So how did people keep clean in ancient times if they didn't use soap? Bathers in Japan soaked it in rice water, or soaked in rice water. Many Native Americans made cleansers out of crushed up plants. The Greeks and Romans coated their sweaty bodies with oil and sand and then scraped everything off with a curved metal tool. Famous athletes sometimes put this goopy mixture in jars and sold it to their fans. Ugh. <laughs> the next session is titled Smelly Equals Safe. Washing with soap became more common around the 1100s during the time of the nights. Soap makers in Europe had figured out how to create gentle, sweet smelling bar soaps, and they used olive oil instead of animal fats. But these new soaps were very expensive. Rich ladies dabbed them on their face and hands, more to make themselves smell nice than to get clean. Most people couldn't afford such a luxury. This was still true by the time Abigail Foote was cooking up her pot of soap in Connecticut in 1775. Abigail and her family would have used the harsh homemade soap to clean around the house. But when it came to their bodies, they might have just wiped down with a damp rag, if they even washed it all. In fact, many people considered bathing unhealthy back then, even dangerous. They believed that dirt helped black diseases from entering the body. Scrubbing clean, they thought, could actually make you sick. Smelling like armpits, that was the way to stay safe. So that's what they believed back then. Does that sound like what we believe nowadays? Hmm. The next section is titled Invisible Enemies. It wasn't until nearly 100 years later in the 1860s that America started to get less grimy. By then, bath soap had become a lot cheaper. A French scientist had come up with a way to make it more easily with salt instead of ashes. Still, it wasn't very popular. Then came the Civil War, a long, brutal struggle between the northern and, page flip, southern parts of the U.S. Soldiers fought in muddy ditches and slept in filthy garbage-filled camps. They were more than twice as likely to die of disease than in battle. These soldiers learned that bathing regularly with soap and water could help them stay healthy. 
when the war ended, they took this lesson home to their families. People were beginning to understand that keeping clean didn't make you sick. As it turned out, the opposite was true. Scientists discovered that diseases were called by teeny, caused by teeny, sorry. It's been a long day, you guys. Let's start that sentence again. <laughs> Scientists discovered that diseases were caused by teeny tiny living things called germs. Although these germs were too small to see, they were everywhere on the streets, in people's homes, even crawling all over their bodies. Most germs were completely harmless, but some could be dangerous. And there weren't yet any medicines to fight these invisible enemies. The only defense people had against them was soap. Just like with dirt, soap lifted germs off skin and allowed them to be rinsed away with water. The final section is titled, A Powerful Weapon. Soon, soap had taken over America. Factories churned out bars in big stacks. Movie stars appeared in ads for different brands. Kids learned about the importance of regular washing in school. And by the 1930s, a survey showed that Americans saw soap as one of the top three things they couldn't live without, along with bread and butter. Today, we spend more than $300 million on soap products every year. If Abigail Foote were still alive, she would be dazzled by all the different kinds for sale. Liquids, gels, foams, most are now made with chemicals instead of fat and ashes. But they still work basically the same way as those long ago soaps. And they are just as important for battling germs. Health experts say that hand washing is key to stopping the spread of diseases, included, including COVID-19. As we face this new health challenge, one of our best weapons is from ancient times, a little soap and water. So my friends, that is the main reading from the Dirty History of Soap. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you will be expected to do a little assignment that has to do with this reading you'll find it in Google Classroom and you may use your text to help you you can even replay this video to help you all right um, I will also be uploading the second text that's connected to this one called lending a clean hand and there will be a little assignment to go with that as well bye my loves